Bozeman has been on many lists of top 10 places to live. In fact, so many that I was surprised to find out it had never been listed on a list of friendliest cities. Although in all fairness, it was ranked number two by Dog Fancy Magazine as dog friendly city. <laughs> in fact, Bozeman has been on so many top 10 lists that local writer Ray Ring was inspired to write a tongue in cheek article in High Country News on the top 10 reasons not to move here. Reason number five, to get to the closest big city, you have to drive through hundreds of miles of Idaho. <laughs> I am a native New Englander and have lived half my 61 years in Boston and Portland, Maine, but I told my wife I want to be buried here in Bozeman. As um, uh, Missy said, because it's such a friendly place, I know I can get a good crowd at my funeral. I won't have to hire fake mourners, unless, of course, it's a powder day. <laughs> Bowling alone describes the negative impact that a drastic decline in social contact has had on many communities. In a new book, Social, Why Our Brains Are Wired to Connect, the author proclaims that the need to connect socially with others is as basic as our need for food. So I googled community and this is what I found. In Bozeman, more than many places, it is easy to find that feeling of fellowship because so many people who live here have made a conscious choice. They're people who could live anywhere, but they made a conscious choice to live here. Nowhere is that fellowship or sense of connection more evident than on the few blocks of Main Street near the Ellen Theater. I recently counted more than 30 people I know by name who work just a short walk from my office above Chalet Sports. On a typical day, I'll stop at Wild Joe's where I might bump into Keith McCafferty at work on his latest fly fishing mystery, then over to the co-op for lunch where I'll joke with Melissa or uh, co-op manager Kelly. The day may also include a brief chat with my friend Dan at Instiprints, now Allegra. Of course, the downside of living in a small city is that it can be hard to avoid those few people you would just rather not see. <laughs> Luckily for most of us, that is a relatively small number. Two years ago, the American Planning Association named Main Street one of the country's 10 great streets. It called the downtown street, quote, a time capsule that captures the city's history and has helped continue the economic and cultural prosperity. Of course, many still wish for the good old days when you could ride a snowmobile down Main Street without anyone blinking an eye, and coffee was a nickel, not four dollars. Some worry Bozeman will become another Aspen or Boulder, a Brigadoon only for the rich. But like it or not, continued gentrification of downtown Bozeman appears to be unstoppable as more people across the country are attracted to the idea of living within walking distance of all that Main Streets here and elsewhere have to offer. Block M is a case in point, with some of these handsome townhomes selling for as much as $800,000 or $900,000. But one of the great things about Bozeman's Main Street is that there's at least one or two places you can still buy a toaster or a Phillips screwdriver to go with that lavender latte or that arugula salad. <laughs> and luckily, Main Street still has a few reminders of a time gone by where you can get haircuts for 10 bucks and espresso still remains a foreign concept. The Western is one of four or five restaurants downtown where our breakfast group meets every Sunday. It works like any extended dysfunctional family, except that you can join or leave anytime you want. Boyfriends and girlfriends come and go, but a solid core remains. The group has met promptly at 7 a.m. every Sunday for the past 15 years. For, for me, Sundays may also include a stop at the cannery next to Burger Bob's to watch my New England Patriots 
Until, yeah, until this year, former MSU star Dane Fletcher was a linebacker for the Pats. Dane now plays for Tampa Bay, but his dad, Bob Fletcher, still sneaks a peek at the Patriots games. Bozeman's Main Street has encouraged numerous entrepreneurs to bring new businesses to Bozeman. Here I am with coffee maven Natalie Van Dusen at her little red wagon coffee roasters just behind Wild Joe's. Natalie has turned her love affair with coffee into a successful business. Main Street is also the site for exciting new concepts like Bozeman Soup, which meets several times a year at the Eagles Club. For the cost of a bowl of soup, you get to vote on which of four grassroots groups get your money. Amber Robertson, who is with PK, recently won $1,000 to provide quilts for Bozeman's homeless. And yes, that trophy is made out of a soup can. Today, there are more than 700 cities. Oh, for me, uh, nothing reflects this vibrant community more than our very own Pachachka Night at the Ellen Theater. Many of us already know a few of the presenters well enough to wave or exchange a few words on Main Street, but often it is only at PK that we learn their passions and their dreams. Today, there are more than 700 cities around the world hosting Pachachkas, but none our size packing a theater like the Ellen right here on Main Street eight times a year. More than anything, I think, that is a testament to a very special kind of place. On a trip to Newfoundland this past summer, one proud young man told me that Newfoundlanders are the only ones who are homesick when they get to heaven. <laughs> I love Bozeman, but I'm not sure I would go quite that far. I think I'll be fine as long as heaven has a main street where I can stop in and say hi to all my friends, or at least the friends who make it up there with me. Thank you.